Sylvie. Hello and welcome to beautiful Kirkland, Washington. We're here at Bungie Studios and I've got Lars Bakken at my side here who's here to tell us a bit about uh, Halo 3 ODST competitive multiplayer. So uh, how does that work, Lars? It comes with a, a separate bonus disc, right? That's correct. Uh, it comes with a second disc which we just described as the Halo 3 complete multiplayer experience. And uh, what that has is every single map that's ever been released for Halo 3, so all 21 maps, and then we have three brand new ones, so the total is 24, and those three new maps are Heretic, uh, Longshore, and Citadel. Okay, let's talk about those maps. Heretic is a, it's a bit of a remake of a classic Halo 2 map, right? Yes, Heretic is a remake of uh, Midship from Halo 2, which is something that fans have been asking for basically since Halo 3 launched. Um, and, and as opposed to something like uh, Blackout, which was kind of a spiritual remake, I guess, of uh, Lockout, um, Heretic is really, we tried to keep it as close as possible. There are going to be minor differences I'm sure fans will notice, but to the best of our abilities, we tried to make it uh, as close to the same as midship as we possibly could. Do you expect for this to be a similar type of experience as Halo 2, or does the do all the new game modes for Halo 3 add like a whole new layer to it? They definitely add a new layer. I mean, I think um, the game has changed I wouldn't say significantly, but there's been a lot of things that were added between Halo 2 and Halo 3, like equipment, for example. So um, Heretic has equipment where Midship never would have had something like that. Um, you know, so that does change things up. So, you know, those kinds of changes actually make, make Heretic play differently than Midship ever did. So let's talk about some of those new maps now. Uh, Citadel, you were saying that the fans were clamoring for this arena-style, small, symmetrical map. Can you tell us uh, what the fans are asking for and what you delivered with Citadel? Sure. Um, I think, really, when we looked at our full roster of maps, we realized that there were you know, something that the fans wanted and something that we realized internally was that there weren't a lot of these really small maps. Um, you know, something like Guardian, for example, which is still easily our probably most played map in Halo 3. And they wanted, you know, professional gamers but everyone the community was clamoring for something a new kind of small symmetric map and so you know we're delivering heretic which is awesome but then citadel is a brand new experience and we kind of we took um, inspiration from the halo 3 campaign and it's actually forerunner architecture and we made it into this rotationally symmetrical small map which actually plays really cool what sort of game modes uh, benefit the most from this type of map uh, absolutely Team Slayer, but multi-flag is really fun as well because each team kind of has this really cool um, base on their side of the map, but it's open and there are multiple routes in. Um, it, it just plays really well for that game type as well. I noticed while I was playing there's no real fancy bells or whistles to it. It's a pretty straightforward map. How does that affect the gameplay? I think it just, it, it basically is a stripped down real nuts and bolts multiplayer slayer map. There's nothing fancy going on in that map. It is just geometry, weapons, you know, really cool jumps. There's a lot of really neat ways to get around the environment, and that was all built in on purpose to make sure there were ways for, you know, normal people to go, and then, like, the pro guys who really like to do crazy jumps, there's, there's a lot of that in there for them as well. So now on the complete opposite side of that is Longshore, which is a much larger asymmetrical map. Uh, definitely favors the sort of, like, um sort of like, you know, one flag CTF scenarios. Can you tell us about Longshore? Sure, Longshore is, once again, when we looked at our entire roster of maps, we realized one thing we were missing is something on the scale of, or, sorry, or rather, something in the same vein of High Ground or um, Last Resort, which is the remake of Zanzibar. And we wanted to make something even bigger than that. So that's where Longshore came from. It takes place in New Mombasa, so it's right down on the water, as the name implies and uh, it allowed the artists too to really stretch their legs and, and try something a little bit different. It actually has a, a different feel, I think, than a lot of the other maps in Halo 3, simply because of where it takes place. Can you describe the ins and outs of this level? The, uh, the defending team base is especially interesting because there's a few different ways to get in, steal that flag, and it's got some dynamic elements too. Right, uh, there's one major dynamic element, which is the, uh, there's a telescoping bridge. So the, the map is divided into basically, I would say, three parts. There's the defender side, which is this tall building. There's the central wall, which has multiple ways to go through, and then there's the attacker building on the other side. And there are multiple ways to kind of go through that wall in the center. Um, but uh, one of the really cool ways is, is if you hit that telescoping bridge and the switch is actually controlled into the defender's building, once you hit that, it gives you a direct 
uh, route right to where the flag or the bomb point spawns, like if you were playing a one-sided assault. Um, and that's really cool. So you want to defend as well as you can that switch point, and once that's hit, there's another route for the attackers to come in. So it really kind of changes the dynamic once that happens for the defenders. Is this a big enough map for, uh, for vehicles to be on there? Yeah, actually we have ghosts on there by default. And um, if you wanted to, you could you know drive a warthog around. We don't have those in there by default, but I believe you can forge it up and put those in there. There may be some other vehicles in there too, but the ghosts, the size and the routes really work well for the ghosts. So it looks good, Lars. When should we expect to see ODST in stores? So ODST drops September 22nd. Thank you very much, Lars. There you go. Halo 3 ODST. Stay tuned for more.